Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, X-Ray Cloud, What's New from 2021? I'm Tony Slava from the X-Ray Marketing Team, and today I'm joined by Bruno Conte, who is the X-Ray Product Owner. So let's hear about today's agenda. First, we'll share a brief int introduction to X-Ray, and then Bruno is going to deep dive and share the top features and improvements in X-Ray that we delivered in 2021. Bruno is also gonna share a demo and walk you through some core X-Ray features. And finally, we'll have time for a Q&A where we'll do our best to answer your questions. So let's get started. First of all, X-Ray is the number one manual and automated test management app for QA. X-Ray naturally embeds the quality management, management process into the development workflow. With native quality management, all QA tools, tests, and processes are infused into the development environments you already work with, like Jira. More than 4.5 million testers, developers, and QA managers trust X-Ray to manage over 100 million test cases each month. X-Ray is a mission-critical tool at over 5,000 companies in 70 countries, including 137 of the global 500, like BMW, Samsung, and Airbus. And now I'll pass the word over to you, Bruno. Okay, so thank you very much, Tony. Uh, so before the demo itself, I'll do a brief introductions, uh, introduction of the features that we have developed during 2021. And starting with parameterized tests. So this is one of the biggest whole goals that we had for this year. And this feature is all about uh, abstracting the test specification and allow you to define parameters within the specification itself of manual test cases. And this allows you to uh, basically uh, define different data for the test case uh, and making it agnostic in some way. So in terms of input and output data, because you'll be able to specify parameters just like you see on this picture here. And these parameters will be later replaced by their values. And the values are defined in a, in a thing that we call a data set. So we'll see an example of this in just a moment. Next, we had modular tests. So modular tests was one of the latest features, actually, that we have released. And this feature is all about composition and reusability of test cases. So with, with module tests, you can just define uh, kind of end-to-end -end scenarios where each uh, manual test case will, is able to call additional test cases. So test cases in this way become just uh, like building blocks that you can use just like test steps. So you can just call a different test case to import or to include additional functionality within the test that you are specifying. Later on the execution screen, you'll be able to see just a list of test steps for you to execute. They, they, might, come, they might be coming from different test cases themselves, but uh, these will all be, be displayed here on the execution screen for the user to see and to execute in order. Another feature that we have released uh, was test run assignee notifications. This was some, something that clients had requested. Uh, and right now you are able to, uh, first of all, turn on this feature on X-Ray project settings. And if you have this feature enabled, uh, whenever you assign a test run uh, to a specific user, that user will receive an email notification about the assignment so that he can uh, immediately know what he needs to execute uh, in JIRA. Another feature uh, is related with the test case importer. We have released a lot of improvements uh, for, this, for this importer. So first of all, you are able right now to update existing issues in JIRA. So not only creating new issues like before, you are also able to update existing issues. Let's say that you imported the test issues once and you made a mistake and you want to uh, 
uh, import them again. So you can just uh, edit the same issues, uh, mentioning the, the issue key on the CSV file that you are importing. Also, we now support preconditions and test sets uh, to be imported along with test cases. And even you can associate them among each other when it, while importing them through the CSV file. We'll see an example of this in just a moment as well. Another feature uh, that we have released was the ability to link tests with requirements. However, using uh, our own X-ray issue picker dialog. So before, in order to associate or to link together a requirement, just like a user story or an epic with test cases, you would have to manually create the links uh, between the issues. So right now, X-ray provides or uh, you are able to use the X-ray issue picker dialog in order to create these issue links automatically. And you are able to take advantage, of course, of the all of the features that the X-ray issue picker dialog provides, like uh, uh, selecting issues from your history search, like searching uh, issues just like you see here using the, the default fields that X-ray provides here, or even using JQL. So uh, one advantage here is that you are able to add multiple test issues or even test sets uh, to a given requirement. Uh, we also worked on a couple of features that are related with automation and importing execution results. So the first one that you see here is the support for the robot framework 4.0. So this uh, version of the robot framework broke the compatibility of the XML report. So we had to support this specifically. And of course, this, this uh, version also provides additional uh, additional and enhancements that X-Ray also supports. Next, we have implemented also a JUnit extension. Yeah, for JUnit itself. So whenever executing JUnit tests, uh, if you use our extension, you are able to augment the test cases, uh, more specifically the methods, just like you see here in the picture, uh, you can augment the methods with information that will be relevant for X-Ray. Because when it, when, whenever JUnit generates the, the XML report, it will include addition, this additional information that X-Ray can later use. For instance, for specifying test cases, like the summary or the description, or for associating uh, the test cases with the given requirement, with a given user story, so this is one, of course, one of the most interesting features here. So th this, these kind of features was something uh, that were was lacking uh, in uh, in JUnit compared with other formats that we have, and uh, we have created this extension while JUnit, JUnit does not provide these kind of capabilities. And we have also released. Uh, a new X-ray JSON format uh, with more capabilities. So we are now able to create test cases automatically, or X-ray does that automatically for you. Okay. Um, before you needed to create the issues or the test issues before in Jira, before importing the execution results. But right now you are uh, able to just specify using this test info element the test specification. This can be a manual specification, like a, a script test with a bunch of, of steps. This can be a generic test or even a BDD test. You can just specify it using the test info element, and X-Ray will create the test case automatically for you the first time, and uh, it will reuse the same test case on the following uh, import of executions. Okay, so it will identify the test case by key. If the key is not present here on the report, it will consider the summary for manual tests and it will consider the generic definition for generic tests. Uh, we have also added the ability to import uh, multiple iterations from for the same execution uh, of the of the same test. Okay, this is why we have added this iterations menu over here. This is, of course, related with test parameterization. 
because you can uh, execute the same test case multiple times with different parameters. So this is why you added this ability here as well. So let's now move on to the demo itself. So first of all, uh, I'm going to start about uh, the, the test parameterization feature. And I have a trivial example here related with the strong password validation. So I have a, a simple test case over here where you have a bunch of steps. The first step here is uh, basically leading the, the user to the profile page. And then he needs to fill the data with the current password the, and the new password. And it, of course, the system must validate the password and it must return a message. And if you notice, the following steps that you have here are really all the same. So they are just testing the different, or sorry, the same situation here, but with different data. So this is one of the patterns that we see uh, often uh, where when we don't have parameterized tests. So people just re repeat the steps with different data, or they might even create new test issues for the different data as well. Okay, so this is what uh, test parameterization is, is going to solve. So I have th the exact same issue here, but this is the parameterized version of the strong password validation test, where you see that same uh, step for leading the user to, to the profile page. But now we just have one additional step. And this step specifies here, as you can see, three different parameters on the data field for the current password and the new password. And on the expected result, we have the is valid and the reason. So as you can see, we have input and output parameters that we can define here. And, uh, and uh, in order to use these parameters is very simple. You can just start typing the parameter notation provided by X-Ray and select a specific parameter here. Or you can choose this menu over here to include an existing parameter. So how do you define the parameters themselves? Uh, so the parameters are all defined in what we call a data set. And the data set can be defined at multiple levels. So the first level is what we call the default level, as the level that you are seeing right now on the test case itself. So we define uh, the steps. The steps contain parameters, and we can define the fault values for the parameters. And this is where the data set comes into play here, because I'm going to access the data set. I have one data set already created here, that contains all the parameters that we saw on the on the test steps. And this is a table. Uh, it, it's laid out like a table because uh, the parameters can have multiple values because I can also do data driven testing using test parameterization, of course, because I can now execute the same test case multiple times each one time for each iteration or each set of parameters that we see here. OK, so this is one of the advantages of having parameters is that we can just execute the test case, the same test case with multiple parameters, perhaps for different contexts or uh, using this kind of data driven testing like we see here. So this is a data set that is already created, but creating parameters is, is very simple. So you just press the create parameter button. And first of all, you must specify a name. Let's say that we need to add the new parameter here to our data set. That is the role. Okay, the role uh, will, uh, will uh, affect how the password is going to be validated. So this doesn't make much sense, but this is just for the sake of this, this demo over here. Uh, the next field that you see here is a flag called combinatorial. So if we tag uh, a specific parameter as being combinatorial, it will combine its values with all of the existing parameters that we have on the data set. We'll see an example of this in just a moment. So we'll just tag this a combinatorial right now. The next field that we see here is the type. And a parameter can have 
uh, can be of the text type. This is just an open text field. You can type pretty much anything that you like on the parameter value, or it can be a list. And for a list, there are several options here. You can define an ad hoc list by just defining the values here. Or you can define or can you, you can reuse a project list. And the project lists are entirely managed by the project administrators. X-ray provides a page on the X-ray settings that is called parameter value lists, where you are able to manage these lists. These lists are uh, something or parameters that are uh, very commonly used, like for instance, a list of users or roles or anything that you can think of that will help your business. You can also have global lists and global lists are available for multiple projects. This can be something like the fact multiple projects in your organization and instead of creating parameters, or instead of each project creating their own parameters and their own lists, because they are the same, you can just create it at the global level and you need to be a Jira administrator to do this, okay? And then you'll just are able to add this global list to the project here and we're ready to go. You can just reuse the lists here when defining parameters. So because I have one list here for roles and you can see the values for the role here, I can just, just choose this one. I create a parameter because I have defined the parameter as being combinatorial. And uh, this means that this, the parameter will be placed with a different background color, just like you see here. And let me just choose a couple of values here for the, for this case. Oh, have we, okay. We have, we have two different values here for the role parameter. And of course we have all of our uh, parameters that we had before. So right now, as you can see here on top, we have a total of six different iterations to execute. We have these three, okay? But for each value that we have here, we have to uh, effectively execute these all of these uh, combinations that we see here. So in fact, we have six total iterations to execute. And this is it. This is just how you define a data set. You don't have to define all of the data or expand all of the combinations in order to later execute the test. X-Ray will take care of that for you, okay? Just need to define the data set just like it is. You save it, and then when you go to the execution screen, all of this data will be uh, expanded for you. So this is about creating parameters. You can also import a data set completely from a CSV file. So if you have already your parameters elsewhere outside of Jira, of course, in an Excel file or in a CSV, you can just import it using a CSV. And if you'd like to uh, export, you can also can do that, export this uh, data set into a CSV file. If you'd like to edit the, the data set outside of Jira, you can also do that. So this is it for the data set. Let me just close this dialog over, over here. Uh, remember, this data set can be defined uh, in different scopes. So we are defining it here. This will be the default place where we get the values for the parameters. But then we can define it later in different scopes. We can define it on the test plan for each test. We can define it on the execution. And we can also define it writes at the test run level. So let's see an example of that. Let's go into the test run sections here and let's use this execution that we have here and let's jump to the execution screen. So as you see here, uh, because this is a data-driven test, it contains three different iterations for us to execute. X-ray displays this iterations uh, progress bar over here. As you can see, two of the iterations are passing and one of them is failing. If you expand each one of the iterations, you'll be able to see, of course, the steps and each step here with the respective replaced values. Okay. Each iteration is also uh, identified here with the 
parameter values just for you to be able to recognize the iteration a little bit better because this is way to this is the way that you will recognize it by the values that it has and the values or the parameters within the test steps will be replaced automatically by x-ray as you can see here uh, in this case if one of the steps is failing the iteration is also failing and if one of the iterations is failing the test is also failing so this is kind of the rule that x-ray provides here of course this is totally optional you can override the test result right from here another important thing is that all of these iterations will be executed within the same test run within the same execution screen so while we are here on the execution screen as well uh I would like to also talk about this finding section. So this is was one of uh, another feature that we have released during 2021, and uh, this was just a, an improvement in terms of uh, UI and UX. Okay, so we, we grouped the defects, the evidence, and the, and the comment fields into into what we call the finding section because whenever starting a new execution. You don't need to look at the finding section because you don't have any, anything there, right? Uh, you are you want to see the findings whenever you go to the execution and you the execution is already done and you want to see the evidence and the findings, of course. But this is why you have grouped all of the information here. The comment field is much improved as well because the, the, this is a wiki markup field that contains right now the toolbar that Jira provides as well. And another very interesting feature that we have provided is the ability to aggregate or group all of the defects and evidence found throughout the execution. So as you can see, uh, uh, you can even have a context here of the evidence and the defects. So all these artifacts were created, uh, were created on the third iteration on step number two. And you are able to choose if you want to only show the global defects here or show all the defects from all the steps. Okay, this is it. Uh, let's move on to the next feature. And I'm going to talk about, uh, since we are here on the, on the execution screen, I'm going to talk about the test run assignee uh, notification that we sent. Uh, the email notification. So as you notice, you can uh, assign test runs. You can assign test run to a different person. And whenever doing that, and if you have this feature enabled on X-ray settings, X-ray will send a, no a notification automatically. So it's very simple. Here, uh, it will happen from here, or it will happen also from the test execution itself. Whenever you assign a test run to someone, right from here you will receive a notification very similar to this one okay that's it so let's move on to the next feature right now that is modular tests so this is one of the latest features that we have released and uh, this feature allows you to build a test case. Uh, for instance, in my example here, I have an end-to-end -end scenario for the, the order checkout process. And here uh, I can compose this test case not only with uh, plain steps like we, we can have here, but also calling additional test cases that I have in my projects. OK, so all of these three different steps that we that are hi highlighted here with a different color, uh, they are modular tests. And this means that they are just building blocks of this of this bigger test case over here. So, so as you can see, this is a call test and we can even navigate to the test itself. It, this is the summary for the test and the test itself contains its own test steps. OK, and as you can see, it contains two different parameters as well. And you are able to specify the parameter values whenever calling uh, a test case also. 
And you do that very simply by uh, pressing this data set button over here. And this is where you are able to define the data set for the call uh, test context here. You can override the parameters that were defined on the, on the test itself. Okay. So we have a bunch of different steps here. So the first step uh, is to just open the bookstore website and then we'll log in. And this is why we are calling a, an additional test case. This will include all of the steps from the other test case right here. Next thing, we are <clears throat> adding an item to the cart, to the shopping cart. And uh, the item th that we are adding are, is actually specified using parameters over here. And uh, we are calling the exactly same test case. This is something that you uh, that is also possible to do, uh, but in with different parameters as well here. And we continue throughout the course of this of this uh, this test case. So uh, adding a call step is pretty simple. So you just press this button here, you are either create a new step or call a step, or you can even call a step from uh here in the middle of any position here so you can just press this button this will take you to the to a dialogue where you are able to select the issue that you are going to call this just creates an additional step here that is of type call step okay the leading steps is pretty simple as well and that's it so this works here on the issue page you can use the the uh, steps dialogue as well so it's pretty much the same thing so let's see, let's now see how this will look like on the execution page. So if you go to the execution page of that order checkout process, you are able to see all of the steps uh, expanded. Okay, you are not seeing called uh, test steps here. You are just seeing plain steps that you need to execute. And the only thing that's that uh, where do you know that the test is not does not belong to the parent test case is using this little icon over here. So I know that these two different steps here are from the login user, actually three. And then it comes the add item to cart step or test case. Okay, so obviously all of the parameters uh, are replaced here. And you can even override the parameters on the data set of the execution if you'd like from here. So from here is just executing the, the test cases uh, or the test steps normally following each one of the steps and passing or failing the results. So uh, executing the, the steps from other test cases does not affect the results from the, the other test case itself, only affects the results from the parent test case. So let's say that you have, for the login test, test case, let's say that it's associated with a requirement, right? And uh, you are executing the end-to-end -end scenario and uh, the steps here fail. So if the login step fail, fails here, it will not affect the login uh, feature or the login requirement issue itself. It will only affect this test case over here. That's an important thing to, to, to have in mind as well. Okay, so this is it for modular tests. Let's now talk uh, about the requirement issue screen. So I have a requirement here, a user story. And in order to associate tests with it, of course, you can still use the Jira issue links uh, to, to say that uh, this user story is tested by a specific test case, or you can use the dialogues that are provided by X-Ray. So I'm adding existing tests into X-Ray, and this here you go. So this will open the X-Ray issue picker dialog where you are able to select issues from your history search, uh, you are able to search issues using these these fields over here, or you are even able to search using JQL. Okay, so let's search for a couple of issues here, and let's add these three tests here. This will create automatically links uh, from the requirement to the test case, and uh, 
basically the requirement is now covered by, by the, these three different test cases. Okay, this is it. I think it's very helpful and more uh, better in terms of user experience to use this dialog whenever adding multiple uh, multiple issues into the requirements in terms of searching and finding the information that you need. Let's now move on to the next feature. So we'll talk about, we'll now talk about the improvements that we have did uh, for the test case importer. So as you know, uh, from the beginning, we have improved the test case importer. We are now able to update existing issues in Jira, existing test cases, and not only test cases, you are able to import and update test sets and also preconditions. So all the entities that are part of the test specification itself. So I have an example here. I'm just going to show you the, the spreadsheets uh, that I have here before importing it. And I'm going to show you the columns. So I have uh, one precondition that I'm going to import, three different, sorry, one test case that is a manual and has, and has three different test steps and one test set. So uh, both the precondition and the, the tests are manual. This means that the test cases as uh, the action data and the results fields over here. This is the specification of the precondition. And we are associating the test issue with the test sets that we are creating <clears throat> and the precondition as well. And this is just referencing the number that we have here. You can see this is the column that identifies, well, not actually the test ID, but the issue ID, identifying the test set as number three and the precondition as number one. And I can, can associate them very simply using this, uh, this reference over here. It's also possible for you to reference instead of uh, reference referencing here, uh, these items that were not created yet, you can just reference existing issues using the issue key. Okay, so if you'd like to create test cases and add them automatically to an existing test set in Jira, you can also do that. Okay, this is also possible. So let's let's try to to import uh, this example that I have here. So I'm just going to choose the the CSV importer. I'm going to choose my example file over here. Press next. I'll choose the project. And now I'm going to have to choose all of these fields. So uh, currently we are not updating any issues that you have in Jira. So this is the first time that we're going to create them. So I'll leave this, this field does not being mapped because actually we don't have anything on the, on the issue key for us to update. So this will be to create only new issues here. So I'll specify the issue type, the summary, the test type, precondition type, so the action data and expected result. And then this is where we specify the precondition uh, or the data for the precondition. This is to associate uh, the test sets or the uh, the test that the test that we are creating with test sets. And this is with preconditions. Okay, we have mapped all of the fields, and we begin the import process. And this has created successfully three different issues. So let's see what's uh, X-ray actually created. So let's let's navigate into onto the test case. So the test case was imported, and while being imported, it was uh, automatically associated with the new precondition that it created as well, as you can see here. And it was also associated with a test set, just like you see here. Okay, so. Uh, these were the improvements that we have implemented for test case importer 
doing during uh, 2021. So the ability to update existing issues and the ability to import test sets and preconditions along with test cases and associating them uh, along the process. OK, so let's now uh, talk and jump to the to the automated features that we have implemented. We're just talk, uh, going to talk about a couple of these. So one of the first features that I would like to talk here uh, is related with the X-ray JSON import format. So this format was uh, improved, OK, was improved because uh, before before these improvements, it was not possible for this format to create tests automatically. Just like JUnit or NUnit or TestNG, those formats will create the test cases automatically if they don't exist yet in X-Ray. But with, with our own format, the, this uh, JSON format that you see here, it was not possible to do that. So now it is. If you specify this test info element, X-Ray will automatically create or update the test case. This is also important. So if you'd like to change, add anything to the test cases whenever importing execution results, you can also do this just by changing the, the definition here on the test info. Uh, also, this doesn't have to be a manual test case. It supports uh, manual test cases, BDD test cases, or generic tests. Okay. And uh, that's it. So we are able to create new test cases automatically and also import uh, multiple iterations. OK, so the, this the example that I have here is just for a single iteration. So let's see how it will look like. So uh, I don't have any continuous, uh, continuous integration process set up here. I'm just going to use the interface directly to import this execution result. So I'm going to choose this action here on this test execution. I'm going to choose my JSON file over here. <clears throat> and whenever I import uh, the JSON file, uh, we only have one test case there and it's a manual test case. The test case was failing, that's correct. And if we jump to the execution screen, we can see all of the execution results that we have imported. OK, and of course, this test <clears throat> was created automatically uh, right now whenever uh, the result was imported because we didn't have the test case yet uh, in, uh, in X-Ray. So let's see another example. Of, of the automation or the import execution results improvements that we have created. And this is all about the JUnit tests. So the JUnit uh, format uh, is not possible to be augmented with additional uh, additional information that we add to the test specification here in Java. So this is why we have created this uh, X-ray JUnit extension. So this extension is basically a GitHub project, which you can, in fact, contribute. And uh, it's very simple to configure. You just add it to your project. And whenever you want to, uh, whenever you want to augment your classes, you can just do it just like this. You say that it's an X-ray test, and you specify the fields that X-ray supports. You can associate them automatically a method with an existing test case in X-ray. You can specify the summary and the description for, for uh, uh, creating or updating the test issue. And I would say that one of the most interesting features is definitely the requirement, because you are able to associate the test cases that X-Ray is going to create automatically with the requirement issues, the user stories and the epics that you might have. OK, it's also importable. Uh, sorry, it's also possible to import evidence, just like screenshots or images. Those will be embedded on the execution screen itself also. So please, if you are interested and if in, if you are using JUnit tests to import uh, any kind of functional 
uh, test cases that you might have into X-ray. And if those test cases are then later on associated with the requirement issues, perhaps this can be a manual process right now for you because there is not there is not an easy way of doing it uh, automatically. Uh, please consider this this alternative here because this will allow you to do exactly that. So let me show you an example also of what we have here. So this is a very simple uh, JUnit report XML that we have here, but it was generated automatically using our JUnit extension. When JUnit executes the test cases, instead of using the default reporter from JUnit, it uses our own. And this is why it's able to output these this additional properties that are needed for X-ray to update the test cases. Okay. So uh, let's let's try right now to up to import this uh, this execution. Again, I'm using the UI here from the same test execution issue. And this is it. So I just I just had one additional test case here. We can go to the uh, execution screen to see the execution results in more detail. I had a couple of images embedded there. Uh, this is why I can see additional evidence here that was auto added automatically, as well as comments for the test run. So this is all information that came directly from the test class in JUnit, as well as the test issue description. The requirement, so the test issue was created and was associated automatically with the requirement itself. And you can see, of course, the context of the execution, the execution passed. If you navigate to the test that was created, you can see uh, the same thing here. And if we go to the user story, you can also see that the test was associated automatically here as well. OK, so uh, this was it for for the demo. I hope I hope you find this these features interesting. So let's now go into the the QA session.